I'm going to finish. La, 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 wait till I get my money right. Tupac told me back in the days, you know, you had to get your money right, and then you go to war. So I'm going to war. Excuse me, was you saying something? Uh-uh, you can't tell me nothing. Y'all finally touched the person that's not going to take it anymore. You can't tell me nothing. Okay, can I finish? Interview adjourned. Peace. What's up y'all it's your girl Kelly and I'm back with you guys here once again we're going to get into a quick little video so I just want to say thank you so much for clicking on to my channel and onto this video and if you're new here guys please hit that subscribe button I would greatly appreciate that it is a very easy way for you guys to show love and help my channel out and I am so appreciative if you do that and if you're not new here then thank you guys so much for coming back I appreciate every single last one of you and uh, I'm grateful to have all of you here with me interacting, you know, whatever you guys do, I appreciate it. So, guys, let's get into, uh, straight into what it is we're going to be talking about today. So, this video, I actually, um, I don't know where, where or how I missed, you know, the whole, uh, Parkland shooter, uh, trial. You know, obviously I knew that it was going on, um, and whenever the final, uh, verdict of him being, uh, sentenced to life, you know, in prison instead of the death penalty. When that came out, I had heard about that. But other than that, there was not much coverage, I feel like, on this uh, on this trial and on these proceedings. And a very interesting thing happened. And so I just saw this for the first time just the other day, and I had to come on here and do a video about it because it really just rubbed me the wrong way. And it, uh, it frankly pissed me off, you know, because... Here, you guys can see from the thumbnail, we have this um, silly woman, okay, uh, who is doing a little uh, a little bit here with the uh, killer in question, okay? So they thought it was real funny, these proceedings that were going on in which this, um, this school shooter took the lives of, what, like 17 people, I believe it was, uh, in this case. And um, they just had, like, a great old time during the sentencing hearing. This was, like, not in the middle of open court that this happened, but you guys will see, like, uh, we're going to get into the videos and we're going to get into all of the, um, information behind this and some, uh, different reactions from the victim's family and all of that good stuff. But I was utterly disgusted with this nasty looking woman doing this and, uh, just acting a, a, like a, like a little schoolgirl sitting up here giggling with the shooter. Like it's, uh, you know, like they're, like they're at lunch, you know, like they're on their lunch break, you know, in high school. And it's just truly appalling to see them, uh, have this fun little moment in court during such a serious time in which this uh, person is on trial for taking the lives of, uh, students and, uh, different faculty members in this school. So I wanted to come up here and, uh, talk about it, do a video on this. And I do just want to say, though, I do have a bit of FOMO that I did not see this, um, any part of this trial uh, as it was occurring, because this would have definitely been one that I would have been uh, interested in, because it seems like there was a lot going on, guys. The defense team for this, um, this defendant, this killer, was in utter shambles. Like, I just, I could not believe what I was watching when I was going through these different clips, and um, the judge just... She, as the bad bitch that she is, because she's actually really pretty. The judge is like, um, like probably maybe one of the prettiest judges I've ever seen. And um, she was not having any of it. So she was like tearing them up. There is apparently like different uh, investigations now being looked into uh, both this uh, public defender that you see here on the screen who uh, was acting like a little middle school girl doing the whole, oh, I'm going to flip you off on my face uh, move. And then I think there was also, or there might also be an inquiry into the judge's behavior because she was going so hard against the defense team that they were trying to claim that, like, it was unfair to them. So we're going to get into it, guys. And without further ado, let's start that off now. So let me just pull up the article I have here, and we'll uh, jump right in, guys. But first, I want to read y'all, before we go into the videos, just the um, initial uh, article basically discussing... The outcome of this sentencing trial and uh, and the school shooter himself. So let's get into that first and then we'll go 
into the uh, into the videos, which are very interesting. So buckle your seatbelts, guys, because I mean, my God, I was like, I was clutching pearls, y'all. So it's it, it gets real good. Okay, so um, this guy here, Parkland shooter, sentenced to 34 consecutive life terms in prison without parole. Uh, Fort Lauder Lauderdale, Florida, Parkland school shooter. Uh, this weird looking fella right here uh, was sentenced to life in prison without parole after three jurors spared him in the death penalty last month. Which, if you're out there, you know, if you're one of those three jurors, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? Okay, this 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 person entered a school, okay, and took the lives of 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 countless, you know, like, I mean, touched the lives of countless people and took the lives of like so many people. So many people. I mean, one would have been enough. One would have been too many. But what is the death penalty for if not for someone like this? What, what, especially in Florida, of all places. My God. You guys hand out death penalties like it's nothing. Like, it, like y'all are proud of that shit. Y'all are like, y'all take pride in it. Which, good for y'all. You know, it should be used. I feel like the death penalty is um, something that we should be utilizing in this country. Now, it should be reserved for only people that... It can be proven without a shadow of a doubt that they did the crimes that they did and, you know, it would have to be, like, murder, but it was proven. Like, this man was repre uh, reprehend, like, he was, um, he was caught in the school red-handed, you know, like, obviously, like, he had, he, it was obvious that he had done this. There was no question whatsoever, and yet y'all still don't give him the death penalty? Like, please, please excuse yourself, Okay. Get off my live, get off my video, and go away if you're one of those three jurors and think about what you've done, okay? Because this is not it. So, uh, the 24-year-old was emotionless in court on Wednesday, November the 2nd, as the victim's family members wept. Some parents even said they hoped other inmates kill him. As prosecutors wiped tears from their eyes, the parents thanked them for their efforts and assured them that they did not let them down. Judge Elizabeth Scherer thanked the victim's parents for being strong and patient throughout the sentencing phase of the trial. Under the law, the judge was powerless and had no option but to impose a maximum term of life in prison. While the victim's families asked for the death penalty, a lone holdout juror decided against it. So Cruz reportedly cannot benefit from any mon money donated to his prison accounts. So if you're that lone juror, you know, please, please go to hell. Please just go straight to hell. Because what is going on in your head, okay? Um, so these are just different comments. I will link this article in the description box down below, but, uh, I just want to go move on to our, uh, videos. I do like that the judge, uh, did this, you know, which this is like not something that they always do, uh, where she made it to th that he had to pay reparations basically out of his prison fund. So if any, if any like fangirls, uh, and I'm talking to you, uh, Tamara, Tamara Curtis or whatever your stupid name is, I'm talking to you. Because you obviously have a, a crush or something on this man, and you, you, you like him so much that you're having a little kiki moment during uh, these trial proceedings. If anybody puts money on his books, then he won't get that money. It goes, it goes towards paying the reparations to the families, which that's amazing. That's very good call on her part, uh, because in jail, that's really all you have. In prison, you know, you don't, you don't get anything. You get no special benefits, and if you don't have commissary money or money on your books then you're kind of just sitting there, like, you know, with the bare minimum. And that's what, that's all this person should have, you know. He should have less than that. He shouldn't even have his life, if, if I'm being honest. But, you know, this, this, this is what it is. Then, you know, good on her for imposing that, uh, you know, that judgment that he can't have any uh, money, funds available to him on his uh, prison, uh, his prison book or whatever it is. Commissary. Okay, so, uh... I will get on to our next article here. So, who is Tamara Curtis? Uh, a pick-me bitch, I would, I would say, you know, excuse the language. So, uh, Parkland parents blast uh, the killer's lawyer for flipping the bird in court. And, yeah, she needs, she, y'all, if this screenshot is not enough, like this picture or whatever, like the very first one where she's doing the thing, you know, that we all did in, like, fifth grade when we were, like, trying to be funny, you know, like we're trying to, like, Oh, like in, uh, in class, you know, like you'd like act like you're scratching your cheek, but you know, you're really like flipping your friend off and y'all have a little, hee -hee -hee. you know, she's now as at her big age at her big self, you know, doing this in open court as a defense attorney. 
I mean, where do you get off? Where do you get off? And then, like, the second picture, first picture's not bad enough. The second picture's almost even worse. Because they're, like, they're laughing. And, like, the look on her face, she looks like she's, like, I mean, she's, like, getting off to this. I don't even know what's going on with that face of hers. She's so tickled with herself that it just really pisses me off. So, I'm sorry. Sorry to get so aggressive, but, jeez, like, get, like, ugh, just gross. Okay, so this is what we just read. Oh, gosh. Okay, here we go. So, this is the moment the judge was talking about. This week, uh, the week before the trial began and before a hearing began, two defense attorneys appeared to notice the new camera set up. One seems to suggest they flip off the camera and then this happens. So, let's watch, guys. I guess there's no sound here, but look at his fucking face. I just want to say, um, it came out that he apparently, uh, their defense was that he had, like, fetal alcohol syndrome, and you can tell. You can really tell, like, just from the dumb look on his face, uh, his serial killer eyeglasses, which I don't know if he got those at, like, the Jeffrey Dahmer Depot or where he got those, but you can really tell, you know, and obviously that's no defense. That's why, you know, it doesn't, like, a why would y'all even bring that up? You know, you're just basically uh, telling us that your client is, like, half-retarded. Um, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't give you an excuse to go and uh, shoot up a school. So, uh, but you, I just wanted to point that out, guys. Like, just this whole physiognomy that's going on in this uh, at this table right here is just, um, it's suspect, to say the least. Look at her. Look at that. Really, ma'am? Really? Look at his face. Look at his... Uh-uh. And then she looks over. She, like, starts to do it, and she looks over to make sure that he's watching. To make sure that she, that he sees her. You know? Just utter, utter disgrace, ma'am. Disgrace upon your entire family. And, you know, you really should be disbarred, honestly. Because you're gross. And then he has like a nice little laugh. You know, he's, <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're best friends. Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, you're disgusting. You're a disgrace. I'm so glad the camera caught that and you were called out uh, for those actions because you're disgusting. So here's another moment from the, uh, from the trial proceedings in which this judge, Elizabeth Shearer, uh, she just goes slap the F off on uh, another one of the defense attorneys. Because, like I said, the entire defense team was in utter shambles, guys. And so, this was interesting as well. This was, like, very, this was good, man. This, ooh, let's just get into it. No, no commentary needed. And, okay, great. It's going to bring me to Twitter. Cool. Awesome. It's your world. I'm just living in it. Google. Um, I love to go to Twitter where my account's still suspended, but okay, great. So can we watch the video now or you got more to say to me? My children, I think that's highly improper. To speak to the I didn't even sport. know you have children. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> your children, what about your children? For them to comment on my children mm -hmm. is highly improper. And for this court to allow that kind of testimony okay. is also improper. There was I don't remember any comments about any children. And if there was, it, it, it obviously didn't, it, it, it came and went without me noticing it. Trish, I can assure you that if, if they were talking about your children, you would oh. definitely notice it. You need to sit. Oh, no, he did not. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, he just took it there. So he's mad because, okay, just to provide a little context behind this, um, this defense attorney got his ass up on this day to complain that the uh, the victim's parents, okay, so the families of the victims who this man, this boy, whatever, this fetal alcohol syndrome baby, uh, took the lives of these people's children and they got up there and were expressing in their grief and their sorrow that, you know, that they would, you know, they, they understood basically that the defense team had a job to do, but basically, you know, like how would they feel if it was their children? Just making reference to, you know, what if it was your child? Like, you know, how would you feel? And this type of thing, you know, that we hear from, you know, we've heard this before. And so he got, he felt some type of way, guys. He felt butt hurt, okay? His butt was throbbing over these comments. And he felt the need to come up here and complain and cry to the judge who was having none of it. And so he was trying to say that they were being attacked, 
and that, you know, people were talking about their children, and then he proceeds to mouth off to her, and this is where she gives him the good thrashing that she gives him. And uh, I just I would also like to point out that, Tamara, ma'am, where you at? Where you at? Why aren't you sitting next to your boyfriend? Uh, is that you over there, I spy girl? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Might be her. I don't know. But you, you you're just going to leave him out here to dry, sitting next to this Jordan Peterson lookalike? Where you at, girl? Where you at? You know, you should be next to your boy. So let's uh, let's let her finish, uh, Judge Elizabeth Sure, her uh, verbal tongue thrashing that she's about to give this man. Sit down right now. You're out of line. Out of line. In fact, you're excused. You need yes. to go sit in the back with your with your uh, <laughs> chief public defender. <laughs> hey, who was that? Mr. Weeks, please, please ask the lawyer from your office to go sit down and not to say anything else. Oh my God. To try to threaten my children and bring up my children is inappropriate. Go to the back of the room now. <laughs> I liked that. I like the way she handled that. I mean, the only other thing I would have preferred to see her do at this point is to, you know, put him over her knee and spank him like the little boy that he is. That would have been the only thing that could have made this any better. But, like, how pretty is this judge? I don't know. I just thought she was very, um, very stunning for, for, uh, for a judge. I mean, my God. How distracting. That just violated about every rule. And then here he comes. This is like the main, uh, or like the, I guess the head of the, the defense, the public defender's office. He comes strutting his ass up here to, uh, to make his little, uh, voice be heard. So let's hear what, uh, this guy's gonna say after, after she just, you know, basically, she basically like, you know, she, <laughs> I don't want to say it, that's too graphic, but she basically made a fool of this man. And so now he feels some type of way and he feels the need to come and speak on this. So let's, let's hear from him. A professional responsibility that I have ever, I have never. If you're gonna get up here and you're going to. Judge, I asked you to go sidebar on this matter. You, sidebar or not, you don't have one of your assistant public defenders say something about my children? Judge, that same venom that the court is expressing is the same venom that defense counsel had to sit through this entire morning when she their children She brought up her children multiple referenced. times during the trial. Nobody knows if I'm barren or not. They don't judge, know about my children. Judge. Sit down. Sit down. Judge. Sit down, Mr. Weeks. Please do not summarily dismiss me. I'm summarily dismissing I'm asking you. The go court. sit down. I'm asking the court. I asked the court to go sidebar. She don't sit down. You don't threaten the judge, court's children. Everyone in this courtroom. Just did that. Go sit down. No, no one in this courtroom had to endure what we go had to endure. Go sit down. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. What now? He Did he really just say that? Like, it's the lack of self-awareness for me. Because what do you mean no one in this courtroom had to go through what your public defenders had to go through? Because I'm sorry, are there not uh, are there not victims in that courtroom? Are there not families that lost their loved ones in that courtroom? Did they not have to go through more than what your uh, precious public defenders who had their feelings hurt had to go through? Because, sir, I, I, can't, I really cannot believe that you just said that out your mouth. I really cannot bring myself to believe that you just said that knowing full and well that the victims of your clients are in the courtroom. Wow. Just wow. Miss McNeil she has made her. She should put you over her knee as well. Both of y'all. She's got a knee for each of y'all. And, uh, and it's deserved. Her children a spectacle more than once during this trial. That was her choice. You have absolutely no right to have one of your assistants come up here and suggest something about my children. Now, please go sit down. Judge. You're Judge. inappropriate and out of line. Go know. sit down. Yes, girl. Queen. I like the way she did that. That was hot. Okay, so that's all really that, you know, needs to be said, guys. But let's get into some of the um, victims' families came up after this, uh, after this spectacle happened. Oh, not, that's enough from you. That's enough from you, sir. She already dismissed you once. Okay, so the victim's families came up and spoke after this spectacle that happened in the in open court guys and i mean i've never seen anything like this where they're sitting up there and arguing with the judge the way that they were doing you know and i don't know if it's because she's like a pretty young woman or, or what if it, i really don't know i'm not trying to like claim sexism here i mean obviously i'm not even about that life but i mean i just think that like you know they thought they thought they could try it with her and she let it be known that no you can't 
But I want to get into some of the victims' families and let them um, speak on their uh, sorrow and their grief and their feelings towards what it is the defense counsel put them through. So before we do that, I'll just read this. According to the Florida Bar, Tamara Curtis is a Broward County public defender. So let's give her, you know, let's give her the, the, the attention that she so desperately wants and just uh, put her name out there and, and just, you know, let it be known because she obviously was looking for some sort of attention. So uh, parents of the victims also slammed the attorneys for their behavior in court. Manuel uh, Oliver, whose 17-year-old son, Joaquin, was murdered in the shooting, gave a lengthy victim impact statement. Hiding your actions, he said, the middle finger, like apologizing for the middle finger, you need to learn how to do a middle finger. And let's get into that video, because that was beautiful. Kid, four times. You blew his head. He's marvelous brain and ideas and dreams to destroy them. You shot him four times. You needed an AR-15 to do that because otherwise Joaquin will have beaten the shit out of you. So you were a coward enough. And you can be cowards in this life. Hiding your actions. The middle finger, like apologizing for a middle finger. You need to learn how to do a middle finger. Oh, oh my so God. you don't need to apologize oh to anyone. <laughs> Kudos to him. Go, Dad. I love that for you. And Tamara deserves that middle finger. She does. Tamara Curtis, ma'am. You really do. You know, you wanted to play that game. And so here it is. Here it is. And I hope you are ashamed for the rest of your life for doing that. How disgraceful. How embarrassing. I mean, my God, I cannot imagine being her. I mean, just being her in general, but being her after doing what she did. I mean, just, just retire. Hang it up. Because after that, no one's going to take you seriously as an attorney. No one. And I mean, it's just, it's just well-deserved. Okay. So let's get into uh, a couple more of these and then we'll get out of here, guys. This man, this animal, this piece of shit, this bastard yes, took the lives of 17 people. You have a right to defend him. You have no right. Fuck you. No right to, to demean the people who lost somebody. None. Amen. Okay, I think there's one or two more. This might be the last one. Let's, let's see. We sat in this courtroom every single day during this trial. We listened to every witness. We saw every piece of evidence. It is heartbreaking how any person who heard and saw all this did not give this killer the worst punishment possible. As exactly. That's, that's exactly my point. Like, how, jury, like, literally, I wish I could speak to one of the jury members and see, like, what were y'all thinking? Y'all are in Florida. Might I just stress that point? Florida hands out the death penalty like they're handing out, you know, uh, coupons. You know, those, like, coupons that, like, you get in the mail from Bed Bath & Beyond? That's literally, like, how often and, and like, how, uh, you know, willy-nilly they are with the death penalty. They have no problem issuing it out there. So why not in this case was it done? Makes no sense whatsoever. If anybody deserved that, it is this uh, school shooter. As we all know, the worst punishment in the state of Florida is the death penalty. How much worse would the crime have to be to warrant exactly. the death penalty? Exactly. And to spare this killer's life because he has mental health issues, mm. doesn't every single person who chooses to murder people have some kind of mental health issue? Right. It was extremely painful to hear all the horrific details of this massacre at our children's high school. Just to be in the same room as this monster who killed our son Nicholas and attempted to murder our son Alex. This unbearable. One of the most disgusting and unprofessional actions that occurred in this courtroom 
was the defense team holding, touching, and giggling with this cold-blooded murderer. Tamara. We found this to be so offensive to our family, as well as our son Nicholas' memory. We would like to thank you, Judge Shearer, for being professional. Okay, how many defense counsel did he have? Because right here, these are five people that are sitting with him on his side. And then the one guy that she already dismissed is not there anymore. And then Tamara, I don't see Tamara's bitch ass anywhere. And that girl with the afro that was in the video with Tamara. Like, where, what, what, is, what is this? How many people does it take to put up a, uh, a, legal, def like a legal defense, which... There really was no um, defense to what he did at all because he was, like what she said, he was caught red-handed and the evidence against him was overwhelming. I think he even, like, pleaded guilty. I'm not sure, but um, they just had to make sure that his rights, his constitutional rights were being uh, upheld in court. How many people does that take? Like, really? I honestly want to know that. And fair during this trial. You did an excellent job. The prosecution team... You're all amazing lawyers. We will forever be grateful for the professional way you presented this case and for all the hard work you put into it. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who continue to be with us with love and support through this difficult journey. And God bless those families, truly. I mean, it's just... I can't imagine what they're going through. I cannot imagine the devastation that was felt on that day where this piece of shit decided to go into a high school and uh, and take the lives of 17 people in the way that he did. I mean, just utterly disgraceful. And equally as disgraceful is this woman sitting up here and doing this. And his whole entire defense team honestly should be ashamed of themselves on every level imaginable because y'all made an utter spectacle of yourselves. So, good job. Great job, guys. Uh, so, y'all let me know, guys, what did y'all think of all this in the comments down below? Like the video if you liked it, and I definitely want to hear your thoughts on, do you think that the death penalty should have been handed out to this person? Um, what did y'all think of the actions of this uh, stupid, stupid woman? And uh, what are your thoughts in general about the trial and, you know, this terrible tragedy that happened? Let me know, guys, and please hit subscribe on your way out, guys. I would so greatly appreciate that. And, uh... Until next time, y'all stay safe, and I will see y'all later, okay? Bye, y'all. I'm going to finish. La, la, yeah. la, la, wait till I get my money right. Tupac told me back in the days, you know, you had to get your money right, and, and then you go to war. So, I'm going to war. Excuse me, was you saying something? Uh-uh, you can't yeah. tell me nothing. Y'all finally touched the person. That's not going to take it anymore. You can't tell me nothing. Okay. Can I finish? Interview adjourned. Peace.